Welcome back to the Girlfriend Doctor Show. One of the things that has been so important for longevity and considerations for longevity is ovarian function. So oftentimes we think of ovarian function for fertility, but it is truly a marker of longevity. Everything we can do to maintain healthy ovarian function means that we're gonna have less dementia, less um, Alzheimer's, less cardiovascular disease. It really becomes an integral part of our lives. An important aspect, of course, is fertility, especially now with women trying to maintain fertility into their 40s, ovarian function is crucial. So today on the Girlfriend Doctor Show, I have Jess Kane Berman, and she is a guy, the original and part of the family that founded a company called Body Bio, and which really got its origins in something called, um, well, phosphatidylcholine and the PK protocol. That's how I first heard about this company, and we use it in our clinic at Carpathia Collaborative. So first of all, welcome, Jess. To Thanks for having me. Show. <laughs> you are welcome. I would love for you to share a little of your story because restoring ovarian function was a big part of your story. Yeah, it was. I, I was. I think I've always been into health and wellness. Obviously, you're you're affected when you're in a family that manufactures supplements, there's some level of interest that you always have. And so we were we were quite healthy growing up. We ate organic. Into my 20s, I kind of got away from things. I actually had a lot of different health issues, like GI issues that would come up. And something would happen. I would go see a gastroenterologist. I would get a colonoscopy, endoscopy. They would give me some drugs. And then I would go and see my grandfather and say, nothing's changing. And he would say, oh, well, you need this. And it would just change overnight. And it was such simple fixes. Like, Instead of removing the stomach acid, you actually need more hydrochloric acid. You need more stomach acid. You need to be drinking electrolyte water. Right. You need to be um, adjusting your diet slightly. And so this kept happening throughout my 20s. And then into my 30s, I'm 32 years old. All my friends are going to fertility specialists. This was like a thing in London. If you wanted to get pregnant, you went and saw a fertility specialist. And so I thought, okay, you know, I'm, I'm 32. We just got married. Let's let's start thinking about this. So I go to see the top fertility specialist on, on Harley Street and um, they do an ultrasound and he sits down and tells me, uh, you're going to have diabetes in five years. Uh, you have polycystic ovaries. You're not going to be able to get pregnant naturally. And here is Clomid and Metformin to help mm. you with your, your diabetes. That's it. And I kind of left in shock. And I remember sitting with my husband, sitting with my best friend, just crying because I thought this, like, you think everything is going to just work out. And then when you're told, no, sorry, it's not going to happen like that for you, you're devastated. And I, I really feel for, for women who have gone through this because it's, it's really heartbreaking to hear that. In my case, I called my grandparents the next morning and they said, this is what you're going to do to optimize your diet. This is what you're going to do to optimize your lifestyle. So cutting out certain things, optimizing metabolic function, optimizing metabolic health, keeping your blood sugar more regular, using diet and supplements to stop those spikes that are causing the hormonal imbalance. And I was pregnant within three months with my yeah, first. That's amazing. Yeah. No Clomid, no Metformin. Not, I didn't never take it. I didn't even get the prescription filled. That's awesome. Yeah. That is so good. I mean, part of my story too is the, the PCOS, insulin resistance aspects, even though a good hemoglobin A1C, but then the infertility and early menopause yeah. post-traumatically. So being able to reverse that and it really just put me on fire to help people. It's one of the reasons yeah. I started the podcast to let people know what's possible. Yeah. Because you're giving a diagnosis like that. Oh, you have PCOS. And then you think, okay, well, this means infertility, acne, and, and fat and diabetes, right? Mm -hmm. But in fact, it's warrior genetics. Yeah. They're genetics to be proud of. Yeah. You optimize it with the lifestyle, with the shifts that you make. I mean, that is huge. But a big part of ovarian, um, early ovarian failure and ovarian dysfunction or hypofunction, let's say, or infertility is um, toxins. Mm. And part of our fertility protocols at the clinic that you know we use is about detox. I mean, like for fertility, we've got to detox. We've got to clean up heavy yeah. metals of the, you know, pair, you know, all the toxic endocrine disruptors, parabens, phthalates. I mean, everything comes up you know, typically high in these cases. And then um, post 
um, post COVID there's injury from having the infection or having the injection. Yeah. So let's talk about some of those things. When you talk about, okay, we're going to restore mitochondria. I mean, the power of the mitochondria in the ovaries. I mean, it is, that is like, Yep. mitochondrial powerhouse. Yeah. The ovaries are, I mean, even more mitochondria than in the heart. So we have more mitochondria, right? Isn't that something yeah. like that in the ovaries? So it's a tremendous amount more. So let's talk about mitochondria, explain why we should even be thinking about it. I think if you look at it at like the highest level, your, the, the soup of the world that we live in today, this toxic soup where it's unlike anything we've ever seen before. And so if you think of someone like me, I I'd taken birth control in, you know, my earlier kind of my later teen years, I'd been on and off of it. It never really worked for me. It was something that would always cause just crazy symptoms. But then you're also exposed to all of these man-made chemicals. I think they've introduced something like 100,000 chemicals in the last 50 years. Um, these toxins and these, these endocrine disruptors, they, what they do is they get into our body and when, where they should be sitting outside of our cells. And we have this, this beautiful kind of wall. I talked to Dave Asper yesterday and he described it as a bubble, this bubble that protects our cells from those toxins. What's happening is that bubble's breaking down. Mm -hmm. And just like we get leaky gut, we get leaky cells. Yep. And so these toxins are making their way into the cell and they're getting into organelles like our mitochondria and they are altering our, our epigenetics. They're changing our health trajectory. So meaning that's changing the way our genes are expressed. Exactly. So it's, it can turn on cancer promoting genes. It yep. can turn on diabetes promoting genes, cardiovascular disease, stroke, et cetera. I mean, it can turn on these, these illnesses. Yeah chronic conditions that can be prevented and reversed. I always so. say we have like an Achilles heel, right? You have that genetic blueprint that's your Achilles heel. These toxins are going in and activating it yeah, and activating it at earlier years than we've ever seen before. It's true. And so I, you know, you can talk about what the mitochondria does and how it's important, but what's really happening in society is we are seeing people with mitochondrial dysfunction and that dysfunction is leading to more disease, but it's also what I find just so devastating is that that mitochondria, 100% of a mother's mitochondria is passed down to the baby. Mm -hmm. And so this is where you're seeing all these issues within our children. And now they say one in 25 or 23 children in the state of California has autism. Really? Yeah. Wow. And that's that, frightening. That is frightening yeah. because um, what was it? I mean, just when I was born, the rate was... I mean, it was exceptionally rare. It? Yeah. So we look at all the things that are happening and, and put into our environment, put into our circulation and think, okay, well, um, you know, it, it is scary, but it good is. news is that we can repay, we can figure this out. Yep. We can say no to, um, we get to choose what toxins we put on or in our body. You have to have that autonomy, make those decisions and you have to make them in an informed way. Empowering the mitochondria is critical. Yeah. So because the symptoms of mitochondrial dysfunction are number one, it's fatigue, right? It's fatigue, exhaustion, crashing fatigue, mm -hmm. waking up tired, going to bed, I mean, needing a nap in the middle of the day. That can be a very, I mean, that's one of the main symptoms. What are some other symptoms? Brain fog. Oh, brain fog is probably the biggest for women and perimenopausal women, even menopausal women, brain fog. And we know it's, it's multifactorial, right? It, it's the, the hormones, it's the detoxification of the hormones, it's the liver health, but it's also the mitochondrial health and the quality of that. Something I think that's really interesting that where body bio came from is this detoxification protocol that they used to do with doctors. And until about 2018, we only ever sold to doctors. But the detoxification the protocol, protocol yeah, was no, to no, remove no. these toxins. Mm -hmm. And it used to be for people who were suffering from mold or Lyme or some type of neurodegeneration. Yeah. Now, many people can, almost everyone can benefit from this because the phosphatidylcholine is going into the body and helping to detoxify, helping to optimize liver function and Let's helping to get these that. toxins out. Yes, because when I heard of the PK protocol, I knew it as an IV phosphatidylcholine infusion, and we still do that in the clinic, mm. but also supplementing with oral phosphatidylcholine. And let's talk about like, what can, what can everyone do? And this is something like periodically you should do on a daily basis should do yeah. to keep the cells in the cell membrane healthy. 
I don't think there's anything more important than taking phosphatidylcholine on a daily basis. On a daily basis. And it's forever because so of the world we live in. The reason I kind of grown about this because it used to only be able to get phosphatidylcholine in the liquid form. Yeah. And then my patients now that I would be like, okay, you got to take this liquid, a tablespoon twice a day or whatever. And, but I couldn't swallow it. Like I, you know, from again, a family of gourmands that have to make everything taste good. But now we have body bios, phosphatidylcholine in capsule, yeah, which is very job. good. And they're working to make a less thick um, liquid too. But yeah. the liquid, again, more bang for your buck and a liquid, but now that capsules make it easy to go in the vitamin containers. <laughs> this is true. This is definitely true. It's a, it almost is like a molasses type texture. Um, but I think what is critically important that we're really figuring out, and we're actually going to start doing feasibility trials on um, premenopausal women experiencing brain fog. So you most likely experiencing some sort of mitochondrial dysfunction. And uh, after that, we'll be going into randomized control trials. The interesting thing that you see from doctors like yourself that are looking at people's toxic burden is as they take, as they use the PC in the oral version, and they're just flooding the body with the fats that the body needs, all of these things, BPA, microplastics, endocrine disruptors, PFAS, molds, um, man-made chemicals, they're all decreasing in the body because these things are helping to actually optimize the way we're meant to detoxify. Yeah. And they're they're flushing all these toxins out of the body. And it's it's key because you're continuously regenerating and repairing yeah. cell membranes. And if you don't have healthy cell membrane, mention leaky gut, but you don't have healthy cells to turn off unhealthy cells. So yeah. for natural apoptosis. Exactly. Okay. So phosphatidylcholine, where does it occur naturally? In meats, it occurs actually the highest uh, producing form of phosphatidylcholine is soy, but we all know that soy has become so kind of corrupted in our industrial agriculture system. Um, our PC is derived from soy lecithin, but my grandfather spent about three years figuring out how to isolate all the phospholipids and then remove the soy protein. So there's no, there's nothing estrogenic or allergenic in our product, but it is originally derived from soy. And this is on purpose. Soy has the highest amount of phosphatidylcholine. Sunflower lecithin has more phosphatidylserine. Okay. And that's not what you need. That's a smaller phospholipid in the cell membrane. But the main one that is 50% of the cell membrane is phosphatidylcholine. Okay, so let's talk about how we can how we can use this, how we can incorporate it. Because we, you know, in general, we're exposed to toxins. Yeah. So you've got to do your daily detox, daily you detox rituals, your lymph dry brushing, yeah. sweating in the sauna, you know, all that good stuff is important. Having bowel movements daily, critically, Absolutely. critically important. And so now we have supplementation. So the phosphatidylcholine to take that, to start with that in capsules or liquid form, mm. what other, when we look at phosphatidylcholine as a key member of the cell membrane, the protective cell membrane mm -hmm. of our cells. And that is, um, and then to support the mitochondrial function, how does it work together to do that? And how do we take it? Yeah. So I like to take, particularly for mitochondrial function, I like to also take um, exogenous uh, essential fatty acids, which is another critically import, important fat. We're not getting enough of these healthy fats. This is a healthy fat. So omega-3. Omega-3 and 6. This is actually ALA and LA. We also make a, a supplement called Fish Oil Plus, which is like cold-pressed caviar. So it has high forms of SPMs in it, in the EPA, DHA, um, omega, or essential fatty acids. Explain what SPMs are. SPMs are, you've all heard that fish oil can be anti-inflammatory. SPMs are what makes the fish oil anti-inflammatory. They can be synthetically made. There's companies who have figured out how to make them. But we have figured out that the two forms of SPMs that are highest are in breast milk, which is amazing. And caviar, fish roe. Huh. And so you can actually get whole liposomal phospholipid, which is what we do, EPA, DHA, that's going to get right to the cells. So it's like a super bioavailable fish oil. Is it liquid? No, it's in capsules. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it, it, it does. It does. It's not scent free. I want to keep, keep those in the fridge and yeah. then take them. Yeah, yeah. No, totally. But again, that's good for you. So alpha linoleic mm. acid, why is that important? So the essential fatty acid pathway is really fascinating. We call these things essential because we do not make them anywhere in our body. We have to get them from our diet. And our ancestors would have been, would have been getting them from seeds and nuts and meats. 
And in today's world, so much of that has just been stripped of its nutrient density that you absolutely can get great amounts of it if you're incorporating those things into your diet, yeah. but we're typically not incorporating it enough. And so these are essential fatty acids that our body needs. Our cells really need them so that the cell looks plump like a, a grape. If you don't have enough essential fatty acids, it's shriveled like a raisin. Mm -hmm. And you want that cell to be plump like a grape for membrane, membrane fluidity and for neurotransmission. And so these are critically important. I think where there's been a very kind of detrimental view of essential fatty acids is confusing them with seed oils. And there's a big difference. We are very adamant that people cut out the canola oils and the stuff that's fried in restaurants. And unfortunately, most of the food that's cooked in restaurants, um, that is critically important to cut out of your diet for your cellular health. And then to flood into the body, these important essential fatty acids that are carefully treated are really integral. Alpha linolenic acid is a mother essential fatty acid. The downstream metabolites are EPA, DHA from fish oil. And then on the other side of the pathway is omega-6. And I can send you guys a graphic that you can use in the show notes to show yeah, people right. about this. It's what people think is if you have too much six, like let's say you eat Kentucky fried chicken. Consider it pro-inflammatory. It's pro-inflammatory. Right but you can't take fish oil to offset that inflammation. And so that's where people get really confused about the essential fatty acid pathway. And my grandparents were very passionate about educating on how this needs to be looked at in a different approach. And I think that's, you know, one of the most important things is having the healthy fats. That's yeah. why it's like part of our keto green diet, yes. part of incorporating that healthy fats and the right kind of fat. They're so important and for hormone so regulation. For hormones, exactly. Yeah. Critical for hormones and mental health and cognition. Yeah. Because the brain is mainly, you know, it's layered yeah. in fat. Yeah. So and then our, our livers and fat, our hormones. It, it, and it's, I think the, maybe why we're seeing so much health issues right now is because of the detrimental low fat diets in the eighties and the nineties. Well, and also, yeah, definitely the whole low fat movement was destroyed hormones for a generation. Yeah. Really has destroyed hormones for a generation. It's hard to retrain that. It is. And it's so important and power and it makes a huge difference really quickly when you do. Yeah. The one thing that's important is understanding, okay, the concepts we're going to supplement a diet rich in good, healthy fats, good, healthy fatty acids, and then supplementing with the right fats. Because I remember way back, I was, you know, early 2000s practicing as an obstetrician in South OBGYN in Southeast Georgia. And I would tell my pregnant patients, research shows you need to have good amounts of omega-3 fatty acids. And I was just recommending, they didn't come in our prenatals that we would prescribe for our patient. And that was before I really knew what exactly I was prescribing as far as those vitamins go. Yeah. They weren't exactly natural. They weren't, they weren't, they were terrible. But then I was telling them to get omega-3s and uh, one of the big box stores, there was, they had a recall on all their omegas, uh, omega-3 fatty acids due to high heavy metals. Yeah. And I just like was stopped in my tracks right there. I was like, hold on a second. What do you mean? They're not testing these because mercury in pregnancy is very, can cause neurotoxicity to a fetus. Yeah. And that's what, you know, like our client, my clients were going out and getting omegas from wherever they were getting it from. And ideally from the health food store, but you know, definitely the box chain. So I started carrying, that's when I started carrying products in my own office way mm -hmm. back in early 2000 and looking at, okay, are these tested? So how are yours tested for yeah. heavy metals and everything? I've actually heard right. from you guys. I know this because body bio, we carry it in our clinic here in, yeah. in Dallas and it has been, you know, it is a clean, super clean company. It is a super clean uh, nutrients and supplements. The biggest thing is because we're using it in really toxic people to detox yeah. where, and we use it in fragile children to heal from autism, to heal from spectrum disorders, to help with elderly with dementia and cancer. So these are top of the line products, but it's important to understand like what we're looking for when we're looking at choosing a supplement for our patients too. I'll let you in on a little industry knowledge behind the scenes. Okay. Most supplement manufacturers are contract manufacturers. It's a, some big conglomerate and people walk up and they can just say, this is what I want. This is what, they, they don't know what testing they need. 
when you actually manufacture like body biogels, we're part of probably 5% of supplements that you see in a health food store, even that are actually manufacturing this stuff ourselves. We get to see every single spec sheet, every single ingredient, every filler, every piece of the capsule, see the testing that's done on each of those before they even come in for manufacturing. And then afterwards, we have our own state-of-the-art, incredible quality control team that I've been told on multiple occasions, why do you guys treat this company like it's pharma? It's not pharma. It's a supplement brand. But we go over and above. We do third-party testing on all of our lots so that we can verify what we see in our lab against someone else's lab. And oftentimes it's actually a hindrance to the business and it's caused stockout issues and we're not able to come out with things as quickly as other companies. And it's really frustrating to the operations team, but from a marketing perspective, it's, it's, you know, music to my ears because we are, or I wouldn't say from a marketing perspective, from the brand owner's perspective, it's like you can trust body bio yeah. is exactly what it says it is. Whereas there's so many brands now where they're not including things that are under 2% in the capsule on the label, or they're including random fillers that you don't need, but they're not actually listing them or they're not texting, texting for oxidation. I would say almost every single fish oil that's on the market is most likely oxidized. There's no way you can extract delicate essential fatty acids from fish without heat or solvents and have it be pure and non-oxidized. It's really a, a big problem. That's, how do you guys do it then? Cold pressed Cold and pressed. CO2 extracted. So when you're looking for a fish oil, make sure it's CO2 extracted. Okay. Yeah. So, and then, so you've got fish oils mm -hmm. and we want to optimize that. How do we know how much we should take? I think it really depends. I, you know, I think some of the testing in this field is a little flawed. Um, you know, it's looking at norms. Well, how do we define what those norms are? Is it somebody who's eating a ton of, you know, fast food, it's it's very difficult to see like where the actual norm range should be for a lot of these tests, like the, you know, omega, looking at your six to three levels. Yeah, the omega index. Right? Yeah. And the also the, so usually we'll look at a DHA to EPA ratio and things like that, but also omega three to omega six ratio. So if it's higher in omega six, it's typically associated with pro-inflammatory and you're looking at other inflammatory markers. Also in the blood, like certain tests, I mean, Genova makes the NutriVal, mm -hmm. which is really, you know, that looks at, that gives a good perspective. That's probably one of the better ones on yes. the market. Yeah, I like that one. And I think in general, our bodies to a certain extent, when you start to optimize detoxification and you're, you're avoiding these toxins and you're eating a healthy diet and you're... Okay, just want to emphasize that because when we talk about detoxification, you've got to avoid, you know, avoid, yeah. decrease the body burden as much as possible. And sometimes there's mold toxins and you may be living in that environment, mm -hmm. but you can't get well in the same environment you got sick in. So you have to look at that. You yeah. have to look at that. What's happening in your environment? Is that where you're continuously getting hit and assaulted and sick from? Is it from the skincare products? Yeah. Is it from the foods, the chemicals in foods, the flavorings and all of those? And there's a, a tremendous list and we can put a reference. We'll also put a reference in the show notes on some of the top ones to keep an eye out for yeah. the hidden toxins. Yeah. yeah. And hidden chemicals, just think about, be more cognizant about the things that you put in your body and what you put on your body, mm -hmm. the environment that you live in, your cleaning supplies. Mm -hmm. How often do you walk into a home that just smells like fabuloso? And I think to myself, oh, this is, in my head, I'm like, this is affecting my mitochondria. Most well, people probably don't think that way. Right. No, but true. Or in a car and an Uber and yes. it's got all those um, air fresheners on. I'm like, hormone disruption. I'm opening the window. Yeah. You know, or it's really, it, it can affect you in even a short amount of time. So pay attention to that. Oh, your energy feels worse after candles is another yes. one too. And I love candles. I do too. Yeah. But I think it's really about, you know, once you start to to feel better and you're detoxifying well and you're optimizing all these things, and you start to feel better, you notice the big changes. And I think you're also able to deal with things much, much more quickly. So we had mold in our home. Um, I think it was about a year ago. No one had any symptoms. My, my son was getting like a croupy cough. Mm -hmm. And in the back of my mom brain, my intuition was telling me some, there's mold somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up looking for it. We found it in our HVAC. But I didn't experience any symptoms because my detoxification pathways are working really well. And, I, and we were fortunate in that. But I, I think that that's really kind of a shift that helps people to understand like when we are able to tackle these, the, the world that we live in better and feel good, it's proof that these things are working.
So with mold toxicity, because it is more prevalent than I think so mm. many people realize, and I'm I'm laughing, I'm thinking, because you were at Dave Asprey's yesterday, he was over here a week ago. I'm like, Dave, let me just walk you into my basement. Do you smell any mold? He's like, no, you're good. I'm like, okay. Someone yeah. with high mold sensitivity can tell. Oh yeah. <laughs> There's a very economic way to mold test your home. Just invite Dave Asprey at your home. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, so, you know, we, the, it's true that highly sensitive, you'll be able to tell when yeah. there's, when there's mold or something. So pay attention. And how often did you see patients at, at Carpathia that would come in just debilitated by oh, mold? And if they were in a hotel room with mold, it would throw their symptoms back. Yep. It's horrible. Yeah. And also one way to find out, you know, from clients, for example, I had a, a longstanding client. And when I figured out it was mold, I figured it out because she would say, well, I, I go away. You know, we were away for a month at, you know, at the shore and I felt amazing. And then I came back and I'm sick again. Your house is sick. You yeah. got to get up. You know, you have to do something. Yeah. So if we're, um, I think number one, mold remediation is a really big deal. Mm -hmm. So cleaning up the environment and getting rid of it. But now can we get rid of, what is the protocol. Mm. We, I know body bio was really founded on this. And so the protocol to detoxify mold with the supplements. Yeah. So the, the oral protocol is um, probably six to nine months. It's not something that happens quickly. It's six to nine months of high dose PC. So long, first of all. It, it's, I, I like think it's mostly different. because the toxic burden is so high and you're, you're, asking this fat to go into the body and kind of grab onto these little biotoxins and remove them. Mm -hmm. And that process just takes a while. Mm -hmm. It takes a while to restore that level of health when we've been living a life that's built up that toxic burden for so long. And so kind of decreasing it is high dose PC. So probably about two to three tablespoons of PC, which is like 36 capsules oh a day. Oh my gosh. See, do the that's tablespoons. why you do the liquid. Just take the liquid. Yeah. Can you mix it with something? Of course you can put you it. Mix it now, anything you mix with it will, will go to your cells. So mix it with a clean smoothie. So like my go-to smoothie every morning is um, some protein, uh, like a beef, beef bovine protein. protein. I do raw yogurt, uh, two egg yolks, PC. I'll probably put some clean coffee, mold-free coffee um, and ice. And that's about it. Maybe some glycine for a little touch of sweetness, but I don't really need that. Okay. So you put the two tablespoons, you take two? I'll, yep. I take a tablespoon. I'll put a big glug in there. Uh -huh. I put balance oil and e-light in there. So I'm getting some minerals as well. Okay. And that's also part of the protocol. So it's PC, balance oil. Okay. It's minerals. We need minerals for our cells. Yeah. Super critically so important. E-light? E-light is minerals. Right. So that's an electrolyte. That's one. It's in a it's in a bottle. It's clear. It's something that, you know, again, you'll see it on my desk if you come to my office and just put it in your water all throughout the day. Yeah, it's great. Because it, it supercharges our water essentially mm -hmm. for ourselves. And then the last thing that I think is really important for mold is glutathione. And glutathione just helps to remove those toxins from the body. And we we see, I mean, you see it all the time, the before and after tests that this this works. And so now it's really about how do we put that research into publication so that it is more widely accepted by doctors. Yeah. And that it, actually putting it into the hands of people, because this is a specialty area that most doctors don't understand. It's true. You know, if I hadn't lived through my own story, I wouldn't know yeah. so much of what I do. And yeah. that's an important piece. And it, one of the supplements that you guys have created is butyrate. Mm. Butyrate is gaining popularity and it, we're seeing more scientific research yeah. on it. We're, yeah. So let's talk about butyrate. Yeah. There's different forms. When should we use butyrate? I think, so butyrate's a really interesting thing. It's what's called a postbiotic. We know what a prebiotic is. We know what a probiotic is. When those two things are married and they are healthy and they are getting the right foods, they create postbiotics. And butyrate is the main postbiotic in the body. It's also an incredibly anti-inflammatory molecule that really drives down inflammation in the gut. It helps to regulate our immune system with our immune function and the rates of autoimmune disease skyrocketing. It helps to, uh, it's a GLP-1 agonist. So it helps to increase GLP-1 naturally. And so it's a really critical molecule. We're not making enough. Our gut's disrupted. Our gut's disrupted by the world we live in and the pesticides and the herbicides and the antibiotics everywhere mm -hmm. and the you know synthetic things that we're putting into our body. And so people are systemically low in butyrate. And so when they take butyrate within 24 hours, typically they notice a difference. It helps to keep them more regular. Their bloating is down. These are more kind of like superficial things going on. Those are noticeable differences. But 
at the cellular level, it's just truly an incredible molecule. The issue is we just don't make enough ourselves anymore because of our world. How do we test for that? Like looking at functional stool analysis, what markers you can, are you looking for? You can. The most accurate, they, there are tests. There are GI tests like Genova's, mm -hmm. um, you know, the GI effects test, uh, Vibrant Wellness, Gut Sumer. GI map. Yep, GI map. Those all test for butyrate levels. They're not necessarily that accurate because you're looking at stool that has then kind of been sent somewhere right. and, and it's not going to be the most accurate depiction. The most accurate depiction would be a colonoscopy, but no one's testing for butyrate levels after a colonoscopy. I think in general, if you have GI issues, butyrate is probably something that could be very helpful for you. Yeah. And so again, pre we've just over the last two decades, right? First of all, probiotics and then prebiotics for the yeah. probiotics to work. And then the prebiotic probiotic and postbiotics like this is a trilogy of the probiotic world yeah. and it is is true because it sometimes you can't even use or or continue to colonize healthy bacteria within our gut unless yeah. we're making enough butyrate exactly right? and so and then that's important for all of us and again especially if you've eaten out once this week at a regular restaurant or store that's not organic you've got a dose of antibiotics in that week, right? Yeah. And other chemicals. Exactly. So paying attention to that, we constantly have to re-feed our healthy gut bacteria. Now I want to go, so with the, with mold detox, we're going to take one to two tables or two tablespoons a day of the phosphatidylcholine liquid, the ba body balance oil. Mm -hmm. So to combine omega threes and sixes, yep. and a healthy ratio, the healthy sixes, the healthy sixes. And then the, um, the um, glutathione, glutathione, really important that antioxidant be three times a day, uh, twice a day, morning and night, twice a day yeah. for glutathione. And that just how telling that is before we do a mold toxicity test, like we use mycotoxin, um, labs, we do look at the levels of key, um, mycotoxins or toxic molds. Mm. We have you do like a few days of glutathione ahead of time. Mm. So it can release the toxin so we can see that. And as clients start the protocol, like PK protocol, getting the phosphatidylcholine in, taking IV and oral regimens, you'll see the mold toxicity go up and before it starts to really plummet and come down. And that's also so, the, the length of time, right? That's why exactly. you're on these things for time because it has to actually have the time to, to remove it from the body. So any binders in particular, just with the butyrate and the glutathione, that's going to help with the elimination of those toxins. I don't use yeah. binders you and I didn't use binders through my, my mold tox, um, detox. Um, I, some do a lot of doctors obviously use them. Yeah. They need to be taken three hours apart from PC for sure. I use PC as my ultimate binder and I just take a higher dose. I, I'm more into the concept of nourishing the body. And this was definitely uh, something my grandparents considered. It's about flooding the body with these healthy fats and really nourishing ourselves, not removing. Mm -hmm. It's how do we get back in all the good as opposed to what can we remove from the body? Fascinating. Yeah. Because, okay. yeah, when we do mold toxicity, we at least like them to take a binder. At yeah, a lot of doctors do. Yeah. I think my, my doctor had recommended um, uh, Research Nutritional's Mycopole. And I took it a few times and I just kind of said, I'm not, I'm not going to go this way. Well, yeah. Plus you've got to time it, right? It's got to yeah. be at least three hours hard. away from anything. If you wake up in the middle of the night, it's, yeah. time to pick a binder it's, it's so hard general. as like yeah. a, a mother of young kids growing a business with my husband. Th there's only so much time in the day. Yeah. And I just, that, I, I could never find the time to take it midday. Yeah. I want to come full circle. We started talking about ovarian resuscitation and importance of ovarian function for longevity and that just that concept of keeping ovaries healthy, everything we do for the ovaries is going to support the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are going to sustain us for life, right? For all our hormones, our progesterone, DHEA production, we need the adrenal glands to function, but restoring ovarian function, sub, you know, supporting adrenal function is really key. So when talking about a fertility protocol, what is recommended? Like what does body bio use for a fertility protocol? I think a lot of it is down to a lot of the things that you and I talked about before the show. It's it's regulating our metabolic function. 
um, really evaluating like our, our blood glucose and how that's mm-hmm. operating and, and looking at insulin resistance. So that's the lifestyle part. It's also for us, lifestyle is a huge part of it. Get out in the sun, be grounding, be eating uh, seasonal kind of foods, not stuff that you shouldn't be eating, really taking a look at the, at what you're putting in the body from a supplement perspective for fertility in particular, it's still that flooding the body with fats. I was talking to Dave yesterday about his first book that he wrote on healthy fertility. Mm-hmm. What was the concept? get the fats in. And so taking PC, taking um, balance oil, getting the minerals in, taking vitamin C to optimize egg quality. It takes about, what's the timeline? I think it's like three or six months, no, 100 days to optimize egg quality. And this is both for male and female to do before conception. We add in things like butyrate and liposomal glutathione to help to detoxify at the same time. So you're getting in these healthy fats and all of these things are helping to remove some of the crap that's stored in our yeah. body. And yeah. it's optimizing for fertility while also cleaning up your mitochondria yeah. that is directly passed on to your child. And then you feel like that's good energy. You feel your cycles are better, you know, and that brain fog is lifted. I mean, all of those things and plus sleeping sounder that yeah. always hear that sleeping solid, not waking up at 3 a.m. anymore, things like that, really critically important yeah. when you reset the equilibrium. Now let's talk about, you've, you've given us a um, discount code for our audience, yeah. you guys. So no surprise, discount code is Dr. Anna, D-R-A-N-N-A. And that is for body bio supplements. I mean, again, I'm standing behind them. I recommend them. I use them on even my most fragile patients in the clinic. Um, so talk about some of the other products that you have. So the key ones you said are the phosphatidylcholine. Yeah. PC is like really your, our, that's our, that's, that's our baby. Just, you've been doing every day since you oh, yeah. got pregnant. I yeah. take a lot of PC. There was a beautiful study that was done on women um, postpartum levels. So they started supplementing with phosphatidylcholine in the third trimester and their levels of postpartum depression were, were significantly lower than the control group. And so you're really seeing, and and even like breast milk quality. I mean, you think about it, women take sunflower lecithin to help with milk duct. What's the the clogs that you get? The plug ducts. Yeah, oh right. God, I had a few of those. Yeah. High dose PC. And then you're getting in those healthy fats to the baby as well. So I think PC is really important. Some of our other products that we make, one of my favorites as a mom and someone who's super busy is a product called Calm. It's adaptogenic. It's rhodiola. It's manganese, taurine, glycine, and phosphatidylserine. And so I take Calm all day. I take it in the morning. I take it in the afternoon. I take it on the weekends when I'm with my kids. It just helps kind of take the edge off. It's And it makes me, and I have the ability to focus more and not be kind of anxious. You can all use more calm. Everybody. Phosphatidylserine is known to help with decreasing anxiety, yeah. help with neurologic function. Yeah. So we talk about phosphatidylcholine and phosphatidylserine, especially if you have adrenal dysfunction, if you're burnout. Exactly. Is Helping very, very to prevent good. that from getting mm-hmm. to that yeah, level. Yeah, prevent it. Exactly. Yeah. I think that that's really important. Our liposomals are really cool. We test them for efficacy. So we want to make sure when something is liposomal, which we are the experts in. So the glutathione. Yes, glutathione, vitamin C. I'm working on a few others. Um, And minerals. Our next one to come out is uh, something to remineralize your water because so many of us are drinking filtered water, but we're not actually adding the good minerals back in. But does the e-light do that? You can use them together. So one is going to be more electrolytes that kind of charge up the cells. The other is to get all those trace minerals, the micro and the macro. uh, Then they went out. They did. Yeah. Yeah. They, we just, we took a look at the product and realized it wasn't, it wasn't full spectrum enough. We needed more trace minerals in it. So we took it out and we decided that we were going to reformulate it and spent the last year doing it. And it's about to come back out probably in a few months. So the electrolytes and what's in the electrolyte combination? The electrolyte combination is fascinating. When you go it to- It is fascinating. And it's like you're, well, if you like the ocean, it's yeah. really a good reminder of that because yeah. it tastes like seawater. It does. <laughs> it's literally- <laughs> it's a good reminder. Good associations help with oxytocin, yeah. you guys. It's what's in um, an IV ringer bag. So if you go to a hospital to get fluids, that's what's in there. It's just sodium, potassium, and magnesium. It's no stevia. It's no flavorings. It's no, it's, it's, there's nothing in it to alter it. And I think we've become so used to using these, these electrolyte powders with so many different flavorings and sweeteners and things in them. And we don't need that. You just need a little bit of electrolyte. Your kidneys actually don't need that in between meals. They need to rest, restore, be nourished and hydrated. So adding it's a, it's a really good 
it's a really good addition to and, and to have just clean electrolytes and to avoid the um to avoid the other flavors and coloring food exactly. colorings, et cetera. You know, one thing, and I'm thinking about this because uh, we were at World Springs here in Dallas. If you had guys have a chance while you're here, definitely visit it. It's all these different mineral pools. They oh, have wow. like, the Dead Sea pool. They have the, you know, like Icelandic pools and they have like all of Japanese and, oh, and neat. really amazing healing waters. And because water is healing. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the ones was the lithium pool. And so lithium is such a good mineral. And I, we have crazy water here. So is lithium going to be in your minerals? It is. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be in the mineral blend. It's an important one. It really is. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And the other thing, the butyrate. So butyrate should be taken on an empty stomach or it can be taken with all your other vitamins. I like to take it after a meal because it gives you those blood sugar regulation benefits. And so that's just part of the the protocol, particularly the one that I went on um, after polycystic ovarian syndrome was just to help regulate that blood sugar. And butyrate does a beautiful job of doing that. So I would take it, I would take probably one to two after each meal. After each meal. Yeah. Okay. And if you don't have it, you can take it when you get home, take it before bed, but it does help to give you that little blood sugar boost. Well, excellent. Thank you, Jess. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having and, me. And I'm curious, you know, definitely keep, I'll bring you back when you bring out some of those other products yeah, too, too. And definitely we'll hear about it in a clinic, our clinic, I'm sure. Great. So I thank you so much for being here and sharing your story. Thank you. I think one of the most important things is that, you know, there's always something to do to take one next right step forward. And I wanted you guys to have this information because it's something I'm recommending to my patients and I want you to know why. So first and foremost, like that phosphatidylcholine, it is a gem. I have sat there and done phosphatidylcholine IVs in the past and, you know, start with a daily base you know, on a daily basis, but know what's possible. If you're dealing with fatigue, low energy, early menopause symptoms, we want to clean up, detoxify safely and effectively. Mm. It's like, you know, I think about one of the quotes in the Bible, like a uh, demon was really, you know, I'm terribly misquoting, but a demon was released and seven more came in. So we think mm -hmm. of that on the cellular level. If we're just removing things, like say, for example, with antibiotics, you can cause damage to the cell membrane and then more toxins come into the cell. So you have to seal it, you have to repair it and you have to nourish the body. So it, I mean, it knows what to do. It knows what to do given the right ingredients. So all these things to consider. Phosphatidylcholine, electrolytes as part of, Every, every note I write, every recommendations, like we've got to have electrolytes in our water, especially when we're following keto green plan, when we're you know, working on continuously detoxing, hydrating in between your meals, like yeah. they're not snacking. So hydrate with clean electrolytes. And that's a really good one that I recommend. And then of course, adding a postbiotic to your regimen, to your healthy diet, adding that postbiotic and see how you feel. Less brain fog, more energy. So those are excellent options. And if you do try any of, if, and when you do try any of the body bio products, use the code, Dr. Anna, get your discount and let me know. I want I want your feedback. I mean, this is getting you know, part of my clinical practice. And so really your opinion and your results matter to me. So thank you so much for being on the girlfriend doctor show today and check out body bio. What's the website? Bodybio.com. There you go. Bodybio.com and let me know how you feel. I love being your girlfriend doctor. Till next time. Thanks for watching another episode of the Girlfriend Doctor podcast. Check out all the links below for more.